Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sonographers in the Cities. I'm Lynn. And I'm Giselle. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before we get started, please don't forget to set your notifications and rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts if you can, and leave a review. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to Giselle's channel for more episodes and comment below. Yes, you guys, all that fun stuff. Today we have a very special guest for you. We have Genesis here. She's a sonographer and she's been a sonographer for a year now. She also has a YouTube channel and an Instagram. So she's someone here that's willing to help you guys uh, learn all about sonography. And we're so thankful that she's here on the podcast with us today. So welcome, Genesis. Hi, nice to see you guys and everybody else that's willing and eager to learn. Hi, welcome. We're so excited to have you on. If you guys haven't seen her videos, she has a ton of really educational videos and other videos too, like her hair. It's so, usually it's super curly and amazing, but it's up today and you guys will hear why and what happened last night to her, but we're going to save that in a little bit. So just tell us a little bit about yourself. So, like you guys already mentioned, my name is Genesis. I'm 23 years old. Um, I am a sonographer, RDMS. Um, What else about me? I have a twin sister. Um, She's actually next door right now. I think she's sleeping, but um, but yeah, twin sister. um, It's all girls in our family. And um, I live in Orlando, Florida. Lived here almost all my life, but I was born in New York. And yeah, I'm just you know an up been coming um sonographer and content creator so I decided to kind of like merge the two and you know teach others because I didn't even know there was like a community so like vast and like super helpful out there it's not like other fields where like you just go and that's it you know you just go to work and that's it it's not like that at all so congratulations on making your one-year mark uh I know the community actually is as big as it is it's actually very small and we absolutely love it we do appreciate you joining. I know a lot of people are scared to do that or afraid to get on social media, but the community has been very welcoming and everyone has something to share, you know, with their experiences and stuff. And so we want to know, why did you choose sonography? So at first I had no idea what sonography was. Well, maybe I had like a little bit of an idea, but I was like everybody else that thought like, it's just scanning babies when clearly it's not I was actually in high school and they were like my senior year they were doing the whole pick which college you want to go to and I know I was interested in the medical field but I was like I don't want to be a nurse like you know god bless all the nurses especially in times like now but like I could never personally so I was like I wonder what else there is that like um because I want to help people but at the same time I don't you know there's like certain things I guess I I can't I can handle but it's like not the same as if something I was passionate about. So I was looking through one of the school's brochures that they were giving me and I saw diagnostic medical sonography and I was like, oh, what's that? And I looked it up and it just said ultrasound. And I was like, okay, that's, I guess it's a fancy way of saying it. <laughs> but yeah, and then, so I, I looked into it and it just seemed like something, you know, me still being in the mindset of like, I'm going to look at babies. I was like, I want to be on like the happy side of the hospital per se. Like, you know, like people think of hospitals and they think of people, you know, dying and, you know, people are sick. And I was like, I want to be on the side where like people are bringing in life and like joy and stuff. And then when I actually got into the program, I noticed it was like vast, like specialties and all that. And I ended up liking other like I like general more than I like OB now. So that was like a fun twist. So, um, yeah. And I just ended up just learning from there, from my school. And then also from other sonographers like, um, just I think you were maybe the second or third person I started following from like this community. So, and then I started watching like all your videos and I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to be like her. <laughs> so Aww, <my> <laughs> thank you so much. That's so funny. I, I don't even realize how much the impact it actually makes. And I mean, I think about that and I think about you and you're also doing that for other people too. So um, that's really cool that you, it's all kind of like full circle and it's just like giving back now. I do remember you commenting on um, one of my videos and then you mentioned about call and that was something that you felt strongly you wanted to talk about. I mean, especially in this field, a lot of people don't know about call and 
Uh, Lynn, I'm not sure, you know, as a student, because I know you're still a student, do you do you get to see the sonographers talk about call? Like, because when you go to clinicals and stuff, did you know about call? Does Echo do call? Because I'm not even sure if they do. What is call? <laughs> see? Okay, exactly. All right. So, so Genesis, tell us a little bit about call real quick before we go into other things. Um, and, and enlighten Lynn about what call is and what happened last night. So call is basically, um, they have different names. Like for example, at my hospital's, um, I guess company, they call it like a PRN shift. And then there's some to say per diem or on call. And oh. basically like, um, like hospitals, you know, they run 24 seven, but you can't have a sonographer there 24 seven. So they have like the full timers and then they have like the call people, which is basically like nights and weekends where the hospital isn't like, I guess, in full swing where they actually need someone on shift. And so they just have like a dedicated person for like 12 hours that they're like, all right, when the doctor orders an ultrasound, we're calling her. And then she gets to get up at the mid- in the middle of the night and then drive all the way over, do the exam and then drive back. But it's it's very beneficial um, for, well, money-wise, because they do pay a little bit more, but also for, like, just having that, um, I don't know, just being that person that, like, people are always concerned, because it's usually ER patients in the middle of the night. So it's like, you're that person that gets to be there and, you know, scan them and find out what's wrong with them, rather than them having to wait until the morning for the full-timers to get there. So I just feel like it's beneficial to have a call person. Yeah, it's really interesting. It makes me like now that I think about it, you know, that is on call. It's just a different term. And I rem- that as you were talking about it, it reminds me of what Giselle was uh, saying in one of our earlier episodes of like the different types of shifts or like work uh, hours that uh, we can have as sonographers. So that's really cool. So thank you for explaining that for us, Genesis. Yes, and she did get called in last night. So thank you for being here because <laughs> it's a few hours later. Um, I do remember that life. My hospital doesn't do call anymore. So they used to and we don't anymore because now we have graveyard tech. Um, but it, it's definitely, like you said, people do make a lot of money on call. Actually, they do end up paying a little bit more per hour or exam. And you also get a little bit extra um, for taking a call shift. Uh, I'm not sure if that's how it is for you. Um, yeah. So basically it's, how does it work with us? So when we're on call, but we're not like actively, like we're on the shift, but we're not actively like scheduled, I guess. Um, I think it's like, it's a couple dollars per hour. It's like good gas money. Um, but when you actually get called, it's minimum two hours of time and a half. So whatever you get paid, they give you that two hours of time and a half. And then let's say you stay a little bit longer because at least on weekends we get called. Um, if we get called on a weekend day and there's a routine that was printed out, we have to do those too. So sometimes you'll be going for a call and then you end up staying your whole shift until like 7 p.m. or something. So then that's when they end up paying you regular. And yeah, I forgot to mention about last night. So actually um, early this morning, I was called in at 4 4 30 a.m and when i get there there were only like two people on the tracker and one of the names looked so familiar and i was like this name looks really familiar and it ended up being one of the nurses so one of the er nurses she was um she was on shift and like her stomach just started hurting really bad and they were like check if it's appendicitis check if it's this check if it's that so they sent her to go get a ct and um she was uh she was fine on the ct it came out negative and then but i guess they saw she had an iud so I guess they wanted to see like if it was like positioned correctly. So then that was when they called me. So at least it was someone I knew, you know, but like it doesn't make a difference, but it's just like, I don't know. You just go there and you see someone, you know, and you're like, oh, like I know you. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Hopefully she's okay. Um, but that, that goes to show like what, what we do um, is very important to do ultrasound scans. And a majority of the time they are stat exams from the ER they don't really call you for like a routine or anything like that uh, for people who are curious. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Today, we also wanted to ask you a few questions about um, clinical. So Lynn, do you have any questions for her? Yes. Um, Just before we get to clinicals, you said that when, um, was it when for specialties in sonographies, like you wanted to do OB and then you 
found out that you learned or found out that you liked abdomen more. Why did you think that you like, oh, well, hold on. You said why you, you liked OP. Now, why did you like abdomen more? Like what caused that change of opinion? I feel like with abdomen, and then for me, it's more like small parts, like, you know, thyroid and like, um, you know, the carotid too, except in my, where I work, um, carotids, actually the echo techs do them. So all we do are like the DVT studies. Um, but like abdomen in general, I like doing like renals. I, I just find them so interesting for some reason. Um, and I guess it's just like, I don't know. I feel like it's for me, it's like the different shapes and like how like everything fits together in the body. And it's like, you could be doing like an abdomen protocol and you're doing like four or five different organs all at once. So interesting. And I feel like it's more like the textbook abdomen. I like a lot because like, I'm not very good at like taking tests and OB and stuff I just feel like it's a lot to like I feel like it's a lot to memorize especially like the chromosome or abnormalities like I'm not good textbook wise but scanning wise I am good like I like doing BPPs and stuff but I guess it's just like a difference of like interest and like what you like to see and what you like to to scan that's awesome and um you've been a sonographer for one year and uh around when did you know that you this opinion change I'm just curious because, you know, like our like uh, expectations change from and all that stuff. So like when did that opinion change? I think it was when I was in school, mostly because they focused more on like general because obviously they don't have like OB people just like at our disposal to scan. So we use phantoms and stuff. So I feel like maybe it just wasn't the same for me until I got to clinicals. And then even then, like I work at a hospital and like you don't fully see OB as much, maybe OB first try. Um, So I think it's just more like getting that practice in abdomen that I just started, you know, just getting more experience and saying like, hey, wait, I understand this a little bit more. Um, And I do still like OB. Like when I was in when I was in clinicals, actually, a whole bunch of my friends and even my older sister ended up being pregnant. So like thank God for that experience. Cause I got to practice on them a lot. And, um, so now I feel like I'm well-versed in both. I just feel like maybe for some students that are geared predominantly towards like learning one thing, I feel like they're just gonna, cause they know it and they're more familiar with it. They might know it more, but then when you get into the field, it's like, you can do all kinds of things. And then maybe like 10 years from now, you might realize you like vascular more than, you know, abdomen. So I feel like it's just something that changes. That's really fascinating um, to hear you say that because for me, um, clinicals really change how I see like the different specialties that I like because I, I loved echo, but for clinicals, I'm learning to like vascular more. So it's clinicals, I think that is really a big part of shaping what you want to do um, when you graduate as a student. So how was your like clinical experience? Like you touched upon that um, previously. So if you can elaborate more. Yeah, so my clinical, actually my first clinical site is where I'm working now. They ended up hiring me afterwards. So um, yeah, so my first clinical site, well, because we started clinicals right on the brink of COVID. So um, we actually had to like delay the actual going to facilities because they weren't accepting students. So the first, I want to say like five or six months, we were just going to the school. Like if we had someone we knew we could practice on, we would take them to the school and scan them. And that was where we would get our competencies and stuff. And then when I started going to my first clinical site, I just like loved it right off the bat. I was nervous. You know, of course, we get like those first day jitters and the feeling like we're not good enough when that's not the case. And yeah so then I feel like it's just like the atmosphere of where you're at that really makes an impact because like the sonographers and even like the other techs like x-ray and ct they were like so open to like having me there and I feel like that's just very important to like impressionable students um really the facility you go to because you can go somewhere where like they're not really interested in teaching you and then it makes you feel like like why did I do this you know so yeah it's definitely um it's just something that I would that I was I guess I grew on it from like being nervous to them being like, they were like, all right, go do this exam by yourself. And it just like, it made me have a sense of like, I can do this. And then my second site wasn't so great because my, well, before I started clinicals, I was like, I want at least 
one hospital like experience and then like a nine to five clinic experience to see which one I would want to do more. So I got that. So I got the hospital and then I got the clinic and then, um, it wasn't bad. It was, you know, the people. So, um, that's why I say it definitely makes a difference, like who you're working with and who's teaching you. And then I ended up actually, my first job was a clinic job, like a nine to five job. And, um, I didn't like it that much either. So I was like, yeah, I'm staying in the hospital. So clinicals is really a good way to open up like what you might want to do. Yeah, that is a, we, me and Lynn always talk about that, how the environment is very important, especially because you go in thinking one thing, like a lot of people go in thinking they want to do the nine to five, but then they realize what it's actually like, or a lot of people think they want to do hospital and then they realize they can't handle that too. So it's actually, I love that you talked about that and you were able to see both because not a lot of people get to see both. I actually did all my clinicals at the hospital and I didn't work outpatient until like later on in my career, but it's definitely a different experience. So I'm glad you got to see both and it's really cool that they got to rotate you and and now look at you with the job at your first clinical. It's like full circle again. That's like the ideal setting, right? That's what we mentioned in our last episode. Mm-hmm. And um, so Genesis, I wanted to ask you, what advice do you have for students who are in clinicals or about to start clinicals or very scared of clinicals, you know, like not even um, starting yet? And um, what advice can you give them so that they can land a job at one of their clinical sites like you did? So this advice, I feel like, can be for clinicals or even for like after you graduate a job interview, which technically you're supposed to do every clinical site as if it is a job interview in general, because they're watching you. They're not just teaching you. They're like watching how you work and stuff. So I want to say like, like jump on every opportunity out there even if it's something that's like oh I don't think I can do that I don't think I'm gonna like that like just do it anyway like open doors for yourself just get your foot in the door and then after you get your foot in the door like put it on their necks kind of like not like in that in that mentality like step on their necks but like you know show them like show up and be present and be confident in what you do even if you don't know what you're doing because I've had days where I'm like I'm I don't know what this is. And, you know, my sonographer's behind me watching me and I'm like, and, you know, I would just scan it like, yeah, I know what it is. And it just, it makes more, it makes more of an impact just having that confidence that like you're here for a reason and you're capable than to be like timid and not want to do anything. Cause you're not going to learn that way either. So I would definitely say like, show up, even if like, like show up for others and then show up for yourself because people are going to see that. Um, And even if you don't think you have that in you, like your eyes always look outward, your eyes don't look inward. So you can't really see the potential um, that you have maybe at that moment, but someone else might see it in you and you can only show it to them if you kind of like put yourself out there. So then way like months later in hindsight, they can come and tell you like my instructor actually from um, my clinical is actually my manager now. She was the one who offered me the job and she was like, yeah, you're doing a lot better than, you know, like how you were when you started. And it's something that I can't see because, you know, you're going day by day and you don't realize the growth until somebody else tells you. So it's definitely good to, um, to be nice to other people because, you know, the sonography world is like very, very small, like Giselle said. Um, so you never know who can end up being your coworker or your manager. So definitely be nice to people and also show them what you got, basically. That's like amazing advice. I was thinking about all the people that I would want to send this to just because <laughs> I know a lot of people are struggling in their clinicals or, um, you know, just kind of getting through with that confidence barrier. And like you said, you don't realize it, you know, and we're all in our head, especially like not even just in clinical, but even after you graduate. Um, but to know that you can be validated by by just being there and doing your job and showing up, like that is one of the best things we can do for ourselves because the field is hard and we're not going to know everything. And so to have confidence, but also not know everything, that's like really, I don't know, like that was really good advice. So I appreciate you saying all that. And I think that so many people are going to benefit from this advice. So thank you for sharing that. Yes. Thank you. You guys are very welcome. 
So what do you think has been the most challenging thing since, you know, you've been doing this for a year now? Like, do you feel like, is there something that you think you didn't even realize um, was a thing? Because I do remember seeing one of your videos about burnout. Would you say that? Or is there something else that you think is, you know, pretty challenging? Um, So my experience with burnout actually was just more of like a workplace thing because they did overwork me a lot. Um, and that is something to be um, careful of when choosing where you want to go after graduation, because you don't want to be somewhere where like you're not going to want to be there in six months time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely the most challenging thing for me is I didn't realize that I think let me think about it. I think sonography is the only like tech dependent modality out there. So it's just like it's so hands on and you're literally like the radiologist's eyes and ears and yeah so it's like something you don't see could be something like the doctor doesn't see and that's kind of scary well it is very scary um so it's just like that knowing that like you could be like doing an exam and then like you could see something and then you're like oh it's probably just artifact and then you leave and you're driving home and you're like what if was like a dbt you know like i've had days like that that i'm like what if i took my picture like you know like everything you think of after the fact um but at the same time it's like if you don't have that mentality then you probably shouldn't be a sonographer because like having that mentality every day is gonna make you drive towards like that that patient care first and foremost that you know you know you want to do better and you know like you could have done better and, you know, apply it. And then also like the wanting to be better for yourself in your field. So I feel like it's just, um, it's pretty hard knowing that you're probably the only person that's like between like a diagnosis and like not diagnosing something. So, yeah. That's oh, yeah. awesome. That's, that's a good, good, it's a good thought because I think a lot of us go into this, um, actually overthinking and I remember in an interview they had asked me uh, like you know what is uh something that you like really like about yourself and one thing that you like don't like something like that like one of those interview questions and your strength and weakness yeah yeah that (laughs) like oh my god forever and like one of my weaknesses I did say was like I was an overthinker which everyone who knows me knows I am and I literally overthink everything. I'm <laughs> so sorry to everyone who knows me, but I really do. And that's the thing that goes through our minds is like, like you said, like you're thinking about it on the drive home. You're thinking about it when you go to sleep. I have dreams about ultrasound, you know? So <laughs> we definitely, I think sonographers have this unique type of career where you get to really dive into it because it really depends on you. And it, like it, you saying that it's you between you and like that artifact just saying oh this person is positive for dbt or not like it is really a struggle and a challenge and that's where the confidence comes in and that's where you kind of just have to know that you're doing your best and trying to be the best sonographer you can be so this field is really interesting i mean the more and more we always talk about it like it it just reminds me of how great sonographers are and i appreciate you i mean you've been such a great like insight to the field in just a short amount of time and you've learned so much and you have so much to give and we appreciate you you know sharing your experiences and and your thoughts and your advice because it's really going to help somebody and their future too yes thank you so much um thank you so much for your time to come on here and share your experiences and insights especially when you had that call two hours ago (laughs) So thank you so much. It was uh, fascinating to hear about your clinical experience um, that I can resonate to. So hopefully other students who are listening, prospective students who are listening um, can resonate to your experience as well. So thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. You guys, like when I started my YouTube, well, actually I've always been interested in like video and editing and stuff. It's actually what I wanted to do before deciding to do sonography um I was like one of those video nerds that was like on the news every day at school and I thought that's what I wanted to do um so I have I guess like experience in that so I was like I want to be the person that like people turn to when they don't know how to like how to what to expect for an exam that's how it started I started by giving advice on like I think my first sonography related video was how to pass my SPI um and that one like I didn't even realize like there were 
I like look it up because I know I looked it up when I was studying for my SPI. I was like trying to search up. Maybe some people have experience. Um, maybe that's how I found yourself. I'm not sure. But <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to just be like that person that like, you know, it's not it's not the same as going to an RDMS website and seeing like, oh, the exam's going to be like this. And it's not the same that as someone who actually took it and like went through the stress and then went through the tears and went through the, you know, all the books and stuff and can tell you like what actually helps and what doesn't. Cause the ARDMS website will be like, we'll sell you 15 test questions and that'll help you. It's like, is it really though? Mm -hmm. So that's how I started it. Like I just wanted to be, and I wanted, I wanted to be real like all the time. I'm I'm not, I don't want to be the one like sonography is very rewarding. It's also very difficult. And I've known people I've been trained by people like 15 years who work in like the Mayo Clinic that sometimes say like, yeah, sometimes I don't know why I'm here. So I just want to be that person that like brings light into that and like, you know, tells them like, it's very rewarding, but but you've got to buckle up basically. So yeah, that's, that's my gift to you guys, I guess. So <laughs> that's a good quote. Yeah, we do. Got to buckle up. We do appreciate it. And I think people need to know that. Uh, and that's why people that go into this field and the clin- um, clinical, but like in the classes, they start off with a number of students and people like drop out. They fail classes. They realize it's not for them. They're like, oh my gosh, this is way harder than what they sold me, you know, because it is hard. <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely appreciate you. Where can they find you on Instagram, YouTube, social medias? So my Instagram and YouTube is that curly sonographer. Um, my hair is not out today, which I, I really want to to kind of, I guess, sell that too. But um, I do also make videos about curly hair and then also like spiritual videos because I am a Christian and, you know, also giving um, an insight to that into like life in general, because life right now is, is hard. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that curly sonographer. Um, I have Twitter and TikTok as well. I don't really use them as much so usually where people find me and ask me for advice it's instagram predominantly like i can't tell you how many dms i get of people taking the art which for me it's like i thought it wasn't it wasn't something a lot of people go through um but it's mostly people in like not accredited schools like i went to um so i was really happy that i was able to be that resource for them because when it was me there was no resources like on the internet about that so um instagram definitely fastest way to reach me if you guys have any questions um and then youtube for videos and stuff which i have to get back on doing but i took a little break so yeah awesome Yes, thank you so much. You guys check her out. Go out on all the social medias, follow her and support her on her journey because it is a tough one. And, you know, I I believe that you're going to keep growing. And I know that the amount of content you have, like it's going to help so many people. And I mean, even just ARRT, so many people ask me about that and I know nothing. So I will send them your way. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. ART was um it was uh it was a roller coaster. It's like <laughs> it's a seven hour exam about yeah. everything. So That's crazy. And I still ask like I feel like it was like not a traumatic day of my life, but it was definitely like draining. And then now people ask me about it. And I was just like, look, if I remember correctly, it was like this and this and this. Like I think I just put it out of my mind as soon as I passed. Um, but I definitely still want to be like that person that, you know, they feel like they can come to because there's not a lot out there. Right. Well, maybe you've got to, we've got to have you be the ARRT person because literally I feel like I, I know nothing and everything. <laughs> I don't know anything either. <laughs> <laughs> and you did it and look at you, look at you now. So we definitely appreciate you. We thank you. Keep doing what you're doing and hopefully we'll have you on in the future. Yes. Thank you. I would love to come back. It's really nice talking to you guys. Yes. Maybe next year, you know, at annual thing <laughs> to see how you're doing and where you are. Yeah, it would be cool for you guys to have like a where are they now kind of thing. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, that would be. Especially because who knows like how big this thing will go. But mm-hmm. we just hit 7,000 downloads. So that's exciting. And and I mean, social media, podcast, YouTube, like it's all about growth and like it's really up and down waves. Like you're going to have this really high, like awesome time. And then you're going to have this low time where you're like, oh, my gosh, do I feel like I need to keep doing this? Like 
I've had so many moments where I'm like, do I need to keep doing this? Should I stop? Like, it's a journey, but just keep on going. We appreciate you. Really, your every video is helping at least one person out there. So we appreciate it. And we can't wait to talk to you soon. Thank you. Yay. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for listening um, to Genesis Speak. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and message her because I'm sure she's happy to help. Yep. And thank you guys for having me. Really appreciate it. Having people that like can help each other kind of like put their voice out there. Really impactful. Yes. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. And we will see you next week or yes not see you but talk to you next week I'm like we yeah bye bye